Well, as we move on, we've got a movement authority on board, but where does it end? The movement authority, as we've seen in previous talks, is a distance from an LRBG, the last relevant Belize group, the common location shared between the trackside and the onboard. And it's the job of the ETS onboard to supervise the approach to that end of authority and make sure that the train doesn't go past it. But where actually will the driver be stopped? Well, if you remember back to talk seven, the onboard is always estimating the distance it has travelled. But the actual distance may be longer or shorter than that estimate, leading to a confidence interval. For safety, when considering how far a train can travel, the onboard will always assume that the actual distance is the longer one. And so the result is that without any other measures, the onboard will stop the driver reaching the actual end of authority. You may remember this picture from one of the earlier talks showing how the train has an estimated position and it then has a confidence interval, which leads to a maximum safe front end, the furthest the train considers it could have traveled, and a minimum safe front end, the least distance that the train considers it may have traveled. Exactly where or how far it has traveled is unknown to the train. It just has the estimate, the max and the min. So for safe supervision approaching an end of authority, the onboard does all its calculations based on where the maximum safe front end could be. That means that all the max calculations of maximum speed and where to stop are based on that assumption that the train has gone as far as it could have done. In practice, of course, the train probably hasn't gone that far. So what is being supervised? Well, we know that a movement authority has a length. It may be the sum of a number of sections and an end section, and that movement authority ends at an end of authority. The onboard, when it is calculating the speed the train can travel and when the brakes need to be applied, uses a supervised location as the place that the max safe front end must not pass. If all we provided from the track side is an end of authority, then obviously that end of authority becomes the supervised location. Now, actually, a train going past an end of authority may not lead to an immediate accident. There may be a short section of track which can be kept clear. And in this case, the distance can be declared beyond the end of authority. The train is not authorised to enter this distance, but we know it would be safe if an overrun did occur. And this is known as the danger point. And where it is defined, the danger point replaces the end of authority as the supervised location. Now, of course, sometimes there is a bit of track beyond the danger point, which can be reserved for a period of time. Perhaps it goes through a set of points. So the, on, the track side can reserve that overlap and inform the onboard. An overlap is normally configured to release after the train has detected that it is close enough to the end of authority for a significant period of time. At that point, the onboard will consider the overlap no longer exists. Because the overlap is potentially longer than the danger point and end of authority, then it replaces both of those as the supervised location. So what is used? Well, the onboard is calculating the maximum speed on the approach based on always being able to stop before reaching the supervised location. It uses a conservative brake rate and it bases the intervention point on the ETCS having to apply the brakes. So it assumes the driver is inactive. That remaining distance is calculated based on the furthest distance the train may have already travelled, the max safe front end. And hence, braking will start earlier than perhaps is necessary. 
So the onboard calculates how far away the supervised location is based on the max safe front end. But it also calculates how far away the end of authority is based on the estimated front end. These will generate two sets of curves within the onboard supervision system. If the end of authority and supervised location are a reasonable distance apart, then the indication can be based on the guidance to stop at the end of authority based on the estimated front end. However, if they're close, then the max safe front end will be the influential one and the train will be restricted to stop so that the max safe front end cannot pass the supervised location. And that will mean that the end of authority may not be reached. So defining the danger point or the overlap moves the supervised location and it actually makes the train easier to be driven close to the end of authority. How close the train can be driven and how drivable that is depends on many things, including the brake system on the train and how big the confidence interval could be. Sometimes it's desirable for the train to be able to get very, really close to a marked stopping location. And for this, the driver is offered a release speed. As the train approaches the end of authority, and once it is below the release speed, then the OMP board stops supervising the train to a stand. Instead, it now becomes the driver's responsibility to drive the train up to the end of authority and not to exceed it. In the event of exceedance, then the system will intervene. Release speeds can be of two types. They can be predetermined and transmitted by the track side or calculated by the onboard based on the braking capability of the particular train and the distance it considers it has to travel to the supervised location. Information displayed to the driver on the DMI includes the distance to the end of authority as a countdown distance and bar and where a release speed exists, this is shown both as numbers and the two-section part of the circular speed gauge.